continuing to praise you for the great sacrifice that you made on our behalf. Thank you. That it was love that made it possible. That we can all now rejoice over the fact, oh God, that you gave such a sacrifice. And we thank you, Lord, that we can still praise you. And that it still moves us to understand what you did for us. And so, Father God, we pray now as we stand before your people, we pray that you will give us the power, oh Lord, that we need from thee to be able to do your will, to bring forth your word, that it can accomplish your divine purpose. So we pray that you bless every hearer that they can receive the word today and that it can bless them on their Christian journey. Now, Father God, go with us right now and let us continue to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We do want to thank the Holy Spirit and thank God this day for how he has moved us to worship and to not be ashamed of the Lord that we know. Amen. And the last song was so special because it really just about tells the whole reason of why Jesus died. Amen. And he proved to us, you know, he had the greatest love that he was willing to lay down his life for his friends. And so we thank God that there was rejoicing over that because sometimes I'm a little disturbed when we don't get excited over the fact that Jesus died. But yet he did rose again. And, and the Christian must always rejoice over the fact of the price he paid. Because he did not have to do it. It was a choice that he did. And so I thank God that there was some excitement over that song. Because that is the strongest expression of love. That's what we call that agape love. And that God demonstrated through his son to us. That the son would lay down his life. But in three days later, you know the rest of that, he, he rose again. And so I'm glad uh, that the song really touched us and made us reflect on the fact of what Jesus did in behalf of this world. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we want to look to the Word of God uh, coming from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, that we would like to read uh, for your hearing. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Amen. We do pray that we all would find that passage as one of those books that's way back in the Testament. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I guess a good point for some that can't find a start for Revelation to go forward. It'll bring you right there. It'll bring you right there. But uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 9. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. But these be in you and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And today I would like to talk to you from this subject today spiritual formation. Amen. Amen. 
spiritual formation. Amen. And we do pray. This is not no deep matter. <laughs> but it is a simple message today. Amen. Because it is to, as they said, stir some spiritual growth. Amen. Spiritual formation. In the text that is before us this day, we are certainly giving proof that once we are saved, we are presented with a new life in Jesus Christ. I believe all of us know that we were introduced to this new life that had its origin in Jesus Christ. Most of us, if not all of us, would agree that we did not know what to do after our first act of faith. Uh, the first demonstration of faith was simply this. It was accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's, that's the first initial act that we uh, demonstrate when we came to Christ. From that point, we were told we were saved. We were told that by the preacher, uh, whoever the pastor, whoever it was that took us in, said because of your confession and your belief in Jesus, you were saved. But after that, we didn't know where to go from there. And, and I pray to uh, some of us who are honest today, if, if I got to speak for myself, I didn't know what to do after I got saved. That has been an assumption I feel over the body of Christ. And it's not because of God, no, no, no because of Jesus, no because of the Holy Spirit, but it's because of we who have been in the church. We have assumed that once a person gets saved, that they immediately know what the next thing to do. But that's not so, because being a Christian is about growth. It is a new life that takes time to develop. Because the growth that we speak of is not physical, because no way can any of us, as Nicodemus had to say to Jesus, about being born again, go back into my mother's womb, no way impossible. Was Jesus speaking in that term? But we speak of that which is spiritual. And he even made that plain to Nicodemus in chapter 3 of, of John's Gospel that that which is spirit is spirit. And that is the only way believers can grow. Amen. That is the only way we can grow as a believer is spiritually. It does not matter, and, and here's another point to help us. If you came as a child and an adult, when you accepted Jesus, you were still a new person who was born again. And, and, and aren't you glad that the Lord has made it that simple? That you don't have to be a certain age in order to go through the new birth. But you can come if you're almost 80 years old and never accept the Christ. But the point is, God's will is that nobody should perish. Now Peter, who is the writer of this particular book, that bears his name, man, which is the second of his writings, he gives us those things that are necessary for spiritual formation. Now, to let that word formation be understood, it means forming or development. And every child of God needs to understand this, that you are a work in progress. Amen. If I can help somebody. Because I have not met no Christian, and, and they deceive themselves, if they feel that they have got this. No, no, because we are still moving, striving to perfection. And don't you know it takes time to move 
towards perfection, especially if it's in Christ Jesus. And, and, and that's why today this particular message excites me because we need to be undergoing spiritual formation. There's no reason if I'm been a child of God for about 40 years or so now, and there is no proof that I have changed. Amen. I, I mean, somebody ought to be able to tell that if I've been on this journey this long, that there ought to be a change about me. That's right. And I'm not talking about looking at me physically. Amen. I, I'm going through the human process regardless. But we're talking about spiritually growing in the Lord. And, and, and brothers and sisters, it should concern you where you are with the Lord. Because all of us in here are in different places. Some of us are maybe a little further along. And then some of us have the audacity to be the same way we were when we came. Amen. And I don't know who I'm speaking to. But the fact is, there ought to be proof that you have matured on your journey. Amen. And, and, and I share a position which I really thank God for what I can see. Amen. If you want to say the maturation yes, uh, of individuals. Yes, I, I, I can see the maturing of saints. And, and every now and then I tell somebody, I say, boy, you, the Lord really has grown you. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 I, and it, it makes the, a pastor happy oh, yeah. when he can see how God has grown the sheep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. He, and, and it ought to make you feel glad yeah. that someone notices how much you have spiritually grown. Yeah. And, and, and that's why in this passage today, Peter is really showing us that this is about spiritual formation. Because after you have got saved, you have some faith that's been established, Peter now gives us some traits for spiritual formation. Amen. And, and it isn't, it, isn't it interesting that it's seven traits? Amen. And, and those of you who understand that word seven, that word seven has been a unique number. Throughout the pages of the Holy Red. I mean, yes, it's a word of perfection, completion, and fulfillment. And, and Peter lists seven things that he purposely say add to your faith. And what he's talking about add to your faith, he's talking about when you got saved, you need to now start to move towards that development in Christ. So there's seven things that he says. He says, you need to add to your faith some virtue. Many of us may not understand that virtue got to do with moral, amen, excellency. Amen. Hey, we, we need to add a little virtue to us. That, that as we move about, as we continue to grow spiritually, that somebody can see that we are morally sound. Because it, it ought to be disturbing when a believer is not morally sound. They, that means that they don't have no, amen, uh, if I can say this, I'm going to say it in no sense. <laughs> yes, they, they just don't know how to behave. That, that, because see, when you morally sound, you know how to behave. You know how to carry yourself. You know how to present yourself. You know how to show yourself to be one of God's children. And, and, and virtue is one of those qualities that will help you continue to, listen, even have a little integrity about yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so he says, I had some virtue, but then secondly, some knowledge. And that knowledge that he speaks of is that knowledge that deals with spiritual truth. Those things that's going to aid you, that's going to give you insight. Then he goes on to say, I had some temperance. And, and Lord Jesus Temperance is important. Let me help you there. That's self-control. Because I hope some of us who might be like Peter at one time, a little high head. This is a different Peter at this point of the text. This is Peter that had converted and saved. And Peter can tell you that I didn't have a whole lot of temperance. 
I, I didn't know how to control myself. Because I tell you, at that time when Jesus was speaking, I had something to say too. I didn't care how much I was out of line, but, but the Lord let me say it, but then he corrected me. And, and, and brothers and sisters, temperance is something we need to add to our faith. Then along with temperance, some patience. And patience is defined as some endurance. Because it's hard sometimes to endure things, but if you got patience, patience will help you take whatever comes your way. And then he says add that, but then second down he goes on to say some godliness. Yes, that, that relates to being godlike. Amen. In your way, in your character. And, and then he said brotherly kindness, kindliness, which is really brotherly love. Love for everybody. And then finally, that great word charity, which is simply love. Now, now, Peter says if we just add these things, then we allow in spiritual formation to take place. And I wonder today how many of us have added to our faith. Is it just the same faith that we had when we first came to Jesus? Or well, along the way have you added some of these things? Yes, if you have, then you know you're on your way to being the spiritual person God wants you to be. All right. Amen. And, and it's important, brothers and sisters, that we be concerned with our formation. Yeah. Amen. I, I just don't want to be the same when I came to Jesus. Yeah. I wanted to be said that somebody has seen how much God has changed me. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? God, not myself. But, but when the Spirit works in your life, when you allow Him to come in, then He knows how to move you. He knows how to form you into what the Lord wants you to be. And so secondly, Peter, he goes forth to saying that there's a prophet in your spiritual formation. Well, how did I arrive at that? In verse 8, he makes it plain that if these things be in you, those things that he speak of are those seven traits that he spoke of in verses 5 through 7. He said, if these be in you and abound, yeah, yeah, yeah. they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Oh, yeah. He says, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's good news no matter how we look at it. Then when we can possess those traits, that they will be for our good. They'll be for our advancement in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. How many of us want to know as much as we can about who Jesus is? See, it should not be just a preacher reminding you, but you need to know him for yourself. Listen, you need to know how to spend a little time with Jesus. And that's why when he says in verse 8 that this is for our prophet, yes. that if we let these things be in us, yes, amen, and then let them abound, yes. then they have you where you are neither barren nor unfruitful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we ought to want to be like trees that Jesus spoke of, yes. that know how to bear some good fruit. Yes. Because any tree that won't bear no fruit, yeah. The Lord has to curse that tree. Yeah. Amen. And, and I want to be a tree, brothers and sisters, uh, that are being bearing some good fruit. Yeah. Amen. Because I have allowed the things that Peter said uh, to be added to my faith. Uh, yes, those things that he said will make us abound. Yeah. Yes, they will let us neither be barren nor unfruitful. Uh, and that's what's good about God. The things that he has for your development, yeah. they are always for your good. Yeah, yeah. And all it takes is just letting us, uh, uh, let it abound in us. 
And I'm glad he reminds us through this passage uh, that it's all about spiritual formation. Uh, how many of us in the house today uh, want the Lord to make us better? Listen, not just from the outside, uh, but somebody I uh, want the Lord to work on the inside. Uh, because that's what Peter was really focusing on. Uh, there's no more I can do with my physical body. Uh, that's already been done. Uh, because the truth about the physical body is this. Uh, it's just getting older daily. Uh, as time grows on, uh, the body is going its course. Uh, doing what it must do. Uh, but on the inside, uh, there's another person uh, who needs some food. Uh, who needs some development. Uh, that you might be a good saint of God. Uh, that's what Peter was dealing with today, uh, reminding us uh, that we need to add to our faith. Uh, just don't be satisfied uh, that you got saved. Uh, and so many of us are staying right there. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved. Uh, that's not saying too much. Uh, but you all want to add to what God has done. Uh, and the way that you do it uh, is take the things that he says, uh, that virtue, uh, that knowledge. Yeah. That temperance, yeah. uh, that patience, uh, that godliness, uh, yeah. that brotherly kindness, uh, yeah. and finally some charity. Yeah. Uh, let it come on in uh, yeah. and make it develop you. Uh, yeah. But if you don't believe me, uh, look at the third thing he declares. Uh, there's failure uh, yeah. in your spiritual formation. Uh, yeah. It's right there in verse 9. Uh, yeah. But he that lacked these things, yeah. uh, those things that we just say it up is blind up not physically up blind spiritually up they make themselves up when they're no good up yeah. they cannot see afar off up amen and that's why God wants to remind us today up we ought to want to be moving up towards what he wants us to be up we shouldn't amen the natural stands up that he has for our good up but we want to be like those up who have received these things up, uh, who are moving along uh, spiritually uh, like the Lord wants them to be. Uh, but don't be like those uh, in verse 9 uh, who lack these things uh, because they forgotten something, uh, that their sins had been purged. Uh, and you don't never want to forget uh, that God has forgiven you, uh, that God has cleansed you uh, through the blood of Jesus. Uh, and I'm glad today uh, that I know I've been washed uh, in his blood. Uh, and I got a witness. Uh, I'm just glad uh, that through the text today, uh, we have learned something uh, about our spiritual growth. Uh, how many saints uh, want to grow today? Uh, how many saints uh, want to let it be said of them? Uh, I'm not uh, what I used to be. Uh, but by the grace of uh, oh God, uh, I am uh, that I am. Uh, I realize uh, I'm not perfect, uh, but I'm a child of God. Uh, and that's all right with me. Uh, haven't got a witness. Uh, anybody glad uh, that you're one of God's children? Uh, you got a father uh, who's patient with you. Uh, you got a father uh, who won't give up on you. Uh, you got a father uh, who loves you uh, in spite of what you've done. Uh, he still loves you. Uh, and in his will uh, is not to let you go. Uh, not to give you up. Uh, to let you understand. Uh, I know your thoughts. Uh, I know your failures. Uh, I know you're trying to uh, in the midst of your struggle. Uh, I wish I had a witness. Uh, somebody ought to be honest uh, that you are struggling uh, with something uh, that the devil uh, is trying uh, to pick at you. Uh, but you ought to know for a fact uh, if it wasn't for the grace of uh, oh, the Lord, uh, you could not be saved. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I'm afraid of saints uh, who never say, uh, I struggle with anything. Uh, but you can see in yourself. Uh, you set yourself up uh, for the enemy. Uh, the enemy love words like that. Uh, when you tell somebody, uh, I got it together. Uh, I'm headed to heaven. Uh, I don't have to worry. Uh, but I got 
got news for you. Every child of God is faced with something that the enemy has designed just for you. Not for me, but for you. Because he want to prove to our father I to take them. I to make them fall. I to make them curse you. But the devil is a liar. The God we serve is God. He has all power in his hands. I dare you to trust your father. When you trust your father, your father will take care of you. Your father will fight your battle. Your father will defeat your enemies. Your father will slay your giants. Your father will deliver you. Won't he do He don't always like what he sees, but because of his love, because of his mercy, because of his grace, he said, that's my child. I know they're trying. I know they want to do right. But every time they go to do right, evil shows up.
him. Well, listen, when he changed him, you're no longer the same. Hallelujah. Yes, you're no longer what you used to be. Because he changed him. He took some of us on throat. Some of us on throat. He turned our lights around. Because he changed us.
see for yourself.